Hey Rebels, my name is Matthew Barton. Welcome to the Rebellion Brewing Podcast. Last week, we sat down with Justin Rivas and talked all about social media and the stunning rise of TikTok. I myself told you that it was something you should check out. Doesn't matter how old you are, check it out. During the stresses of last year, it seems like a bite-sized piece of content that makes you laugh or smile is just a nice break from the rest of it all. One of the local creators Justin mentioned by name is Ryan Doka. He's amassed a following of more than half a million users, garnering sponsorship deals and earning international attention for his videos on TikTok. I wanted to get some insight from Ryan and find out the why and the how of his TikTok creations. So let's get into it. Ryan, welcome to the show. Hello, Matt. Thank you for having me. How's it going? You know, it's going pretty darn well, actually. The weather's kind of okay. Not too bad. We've had a really gentle January in terms of, you know, it could be minus 30. Oh, no, exactly. It should be minus 30. I'm surprised at how beautiful it actually is. For someone who hasn't seen your content, what are you all about? Honestly, when it comes to my content, it could be an array of things. I, I like to think it changes with the seasons. Right now, it's winter, so the content that you can see is really simple ASMR content, which is more of like, you know, when people whisper into the mic or they're, they're tapping around, like uh, weird noises that can stimulate the senses. So you get kind of uh, what I like to call slightly uncomfortable ASMR because I myself... I I absolutely hate ASMR. Like I can't listen to it myself. And that's why I started what I was doing with that was I wanted to make the attention be brought onto ASMR by pointing out how absolutely weird and awkward it sounds. So that's what I do for the winter right now. When it comes to springtime, more summer, I'm learning new skills like backflips, learning how to walk on uh, slack lines, front flips, doing breaking a gla- a wine glass with my voice. So just a whole gamut of things for the whole family. Lots of fun. <laughs> it's always looking for that next big hit, right? Oh, absolutely. When you were talking about ASMR, what, what the hell does that mean? I know what it means, but I, I'm assuming my audience doesn't necessarily know. Yeah, so ASMR is an acronym for something. I would have to Google it. It's just like one of those little shortened down things. Uh, But essentially, ASMR in of itself is auditory uh, like noises. So something like opening a can or uh, tapping on glass or even like people whispering really, really, really quietly into a microphone it picks it up at such a crisp quality uh, kind of you know, way so that when you listen to it with headphones on, you can hear it almost like you're in it. So if somebody's like touching soap and they're kind of like washing their hands, it just, it, it gets you tingly. It kind of sh- sends like a, a shiver up your spine. And people dig that. Some weirdos love that stuff. Well, what is the internet for if not for weirdos? Exactly. (laughs) How did you get started making this kind of content? So I actually, it's kind of a a funny story. When I started doing content, I actually started it way, way back in YouTube uh, days back in 2009. So I started doing weird things like uh, singing videos. And I was like, hey, this is really cool. I love the attention. Then after the YouTube scene, I was like, you know what? I am like coming up on 20 years old and I have no life experience. I'm going to do something really, really fun, get some of that. Then I got into business, marketing, all that fun jazz. And then I got like the idea. I was like, I got to get back into the content creation that I love to do. I love, you know, I'm, a, I'm an attention whore, I'll call it. You know, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Uh, so I thought, where is the attention right now? And it was on TikTok. So, I downloaded the app. I had to figure out what it was all about. How do you do it? My first 10 to 14, maybe even 15 videos were completely 
cringy. Like, don't watch them. They're bad. They're terrible. And once I figured it out, I realized, you know, I can probably make more fun content because I have a lot of lighting. You know, why not just jump into it? But it really all started out just on a whim of a need of needing attention. (laughs) What are some of the tips or tricks that you picked up over those first 15 episodes? Oh, over the first 15 episodes, I realized that lighting is everything. If you have the world's poopiest camera and you just have a good ring light or you, you're just outside or in a well-lit area, lighting is going to make or break your video. Uh, there's so many viral videos that I've seen that are outside and it's like, huh, I wonder why that is. The content's not even that good. It's just, it's really well lit. And I think that's because when you think of quality, obviously quality in of itself is subjective, but over the first 15, I found that my, my lighting was not good everything else is okay. Like I felt the content was just average content that I would make. But then I started implementing my lights and that really took off. And now I'm a stickler for lights. Like it's huge. I know when I was working as a journalist in TV, we would spend hours on lighting, getting the lighting for the set, right? Sitting people in the right spot, making sure there weren't those, uh, harsh shadows coming down if it's a certain time of the day you'd you'd position yourself so the sun would hit you in a certain way so you didn't look blown out or maybe so you didn't have like the creepy psycho stalker kind of look in your eyes and uh (laughs) we were saying the best time the golden hour is right before sunset where you get like that really nice faded glow and the lights bouncing off the clouds to get that that nice illumination that's kind of soft and it doesn't have those harsh serial killer edges. I keep referring to serial killers. Uh, I don't know why, but <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it's a hundred percent true though. Like I even think of, I did a little bit of learning how mood can be done through light. So color theory, all that jazz. When I'm making my ASMRs, for example, I want to look creepy, that serial killer vibe, because I want to make people uncomfortable. So it's a, it always starts out a close-up on my face. And I'm just using a cell phone. I don't use any fancy cameras or anything, uh, unless I have to do something crazy. But mostly all of my videos are done on my camera, on my phone. But the lighting I do, I'll always have my ring light just kind of pointed up so I get the shadows underneath the nose and the chin so my face looks a little bit more bigger. And then I'll look at my – I have an RGB light that I'll put up that I'll convey, you know, some sort of an emotion, whether it be like fear, so I'll make it red, or if I'm trying to be more energetic with the video, I'll make it yellow, or if it's something more like calming, or I want to be a little bit more suave, I'll make it blue. So lighting and color, it it just really can make and break some sort of videos. What about music? Are you, do you lean hard into the music? Are you participating in these challenges and memes? I can't dance. (laughs) <laughs> that's the one thing I, I know a lot of the people that I talk to that are of an older generation or even people my age, as soon as you tell them, Hey, TikTok's great. You should get on it. A lot of them will say, well, I don't dance or, well, why would I want to watch, you know, young ladies provocatively dance? And it's like, yeah, you're going to get that time to time. But once you get on the app and you look into it, the algorithm is going to really switch into your favor and start showing you what you want. And I mean, if you do want to see that, you're going to get that. But when it comes down to, uh, you know, the content of, uh, sorry, what was that last thing you said? <laughs> we're just, we're just <laughs> talking about general musings of TikTok. I guess my next question was going to be, uh, from my perspective, the culture of TikTok is very different from Facebook and Twitter, and it seems much more lighthearted, much more leaning into comedy and entertainment, whereas Facebook's much more pointed and newsy or aggressive, and Twitter's much more about getting the good burn. It really is. Every platform I find socially is completely different the way that the audience is. TikTok is so wholesome. You know, being on TikTok now for about a year and a half, I have never been happier to read my comments. Whereas YouTube for the the six or seven years I was on it, don't catch me in those comments. Everybody's making fun of me 
or they're talking about my the way that I look or my appearance. But TikTok is so nice. And you can go on other people's videos as well, not just my own. Uh, and it could be one of the weirdest videos. You know, it could be somebody that just <laughs> makes a bad video. And the comments are super nice and supportive. Like the whole community is incredibly supportive of its creators and it's wonderful. What makes it different? Why is it not as toxic or not toxic at all? Honestly, I've been thinking that for a very long time when, and as you were saying before with Twitter and Facebook, it's kind of like you can come across all of these uh, negative comments, but when it comes to TikTok, I think because you're getting all the TikTok algorithms to show you what you want to see, you're going to, depending on who you are as a human being, I mean, I, I would mention that you and I probably are nicer folk, plus we're Canadian, so like it's, it's, it, it's supposed to be that way. We're only going to be seeing the videos that are more generally for us, so why would we ever say anything mean? Uh, and all the videos that do have negative comments, I find all the negative ones are at the very, very bottom. They only showcase the high quality, uh, supportive comments. I had an interesting experience. This guy posted a video of himself and he, my comment was unrelated to what he was producing, but he was holding a Tim Hortons coffee and my nickname on the platform is coffee drinker. And I just said, dude, life's too short. Let's get some better coffee in your hands. And I was just being tongue in cheek and having a little goof. And then he responded and he's like, what do you recommend? So I'm like, uh, well, he, try these blends. And then he, he gets back to me like 20 minutes later. He's like, well, everybody local to me is only selling them in 10 pound lots. And for like hundreds and hundreds of dollars, how can I get a small sample of these beans to try? And then two or three other people jumped in the thread to talk about coffee beans. It was wild. And I was just like, what's up with Canadians? Right. It's a wild time. <laughs> I like that. You've had that similar positive experience that I have had. And it feels like when you're producing your content, I'm watching it and I'm like, he's trying to bring even more positivity. You're not trying to bring anybody down. Absolutely. The one thing that I really pride myself on is I want to bring at least some sort of joy or laughter to anybody who watches my content. In you know, obviously I'm making some weird content for ASMR and I'm oh, I want people to feel uncomfortable, but I want them to feel uncomfortable in a good way, not a negative way of like, oh, oh I'm gonna leave the room and go vom real quick or real quick. I don't want that. I want people to laugh and be like, oh, this is weird but I'm, I'm enjoying it slightly, you know? So it's only slightly uncomfortable. But when it comes down to most of my content, I know that in the springtime and summertime, I actually want to more or less motivate uh, my younger audience to go out and try new things. So when I move into trying new skills, so for example, the backflips. When I was really young, I could never do backflips. I always tried, I always failed, but I never gave up. A lot of kids nowadays, I feel like the culture that they're shown is always like, ah, give up, move on, do something different. Ah, come on, go, go, go. But I want people to be able to know that with the right amount of de determination and persistence, they can actually achieve anything they want. I'm a 26 year old who's never landed a front flip. How is this even possible? I'm not even like genetically superior in any sort of way. It's wild. When you say that, it makes me recall something that Justin and Greg once told me that most of your failures don't go viral unless it's a spectacular failure where you kind of make it a success by being so bad. No one sees you learning and being terrible. They only see you when you're great and successful. Yeah. Are you finding that too? Yes, a little bit. I know that when I do you know, achieve a lot of the things that I set out to do. It's kind of getting people to think like, oh, wow, yeah, he could do that. That's cool. But it's what I love to see is people finding the journey prior to, because obviously when I was doing any of my videos uh, leading up to actually landing the backflip, because I landed it. Holy Mac, it took like 13 episodes, but I landed it. All those prior to were me hurting myself quite bad, like cranking my neck a couple times. But 
all those people were like, wow, he's so close. I can't believe it. So the community, of course, is just going to bump you up. But there are people now I find coming in being like, oh, wow, he's just got 500, you know, thousand followers. He was like this all the time. But it's like, no, it took a year and some, man. It actually took like 10 years to get here. Like, what the heck? But nobody really sees the journey prior to, unless they really are a big fan. From backflips to ASMR to all the other crazy stuff you're doing, why do you think it's working now? I think it's working now because, I mean, for me, I'm a, I'm a gigantic analytics guy. So when I look at, for example, the first 15 videos, I went deep into figuring out why certain videos were doing well and why others weren't. For example, I did ASMR, I believe, a year ago. Started it out, had a really bad microphone. It was not good at all. And those videos did terrible. And I was like, well, I'll come back to this in about a little bit of time when I maybe have a little bit more equipment readily available. But, you know, it's kind of looking at the analytics and seeing exactly what hits and what doesn't, replicating it and kind of beating the horse until it's dead. So, or beating the dead horse. Yeah. Like that's honestly what it is. But I also don't want to be known as the one. What one man pony? Is that what it's called? One trick pony? One trick pony? Yeah, I don't want to be a one trick pony. That's why I always need to innovate, come up with random ideas, and always try to put out the next best thing and test. It's always testing. I love testing things and seeing how people react to it and seeing maybe I do it again, maybe I don't. So analytics. <laughs> when I think about young kids coming up today in this kind of environment when i was that age like youtube didn't really get going till 2005 i was already in my 20s when that kind of started happening and i saw this pattern where a kid would go viral for one thing and they couldn't make it hit again and what was happening was they were chasing the dragon trying to get that serotonin bump of millions and millions of hits and external validation and it, it was kind of raw for them and it was pushing them to go crazier and crazier. Do you hold that in the back of your mind where you say, what are my limits? What am I not willing to do to get that next viral hit? Yes. I have always struggled with that, to be completely honest with you. Definitely younger when it was more YouTube. Uh, I was super young, like 16 years old, super impressionable teenager. And I would go out of my way to make very, very grotesque content though. I don't even want to talk about what I did on YouTube way back in the day. It involved Red Bull and milk and it coming all out of my mouth. It was terrible, but I'm glad I did it. Coming into TikTok now though, I love to think that the content that I do isn't too harsh on my body. It doesn't really kill me, which is good. And <laughs> well, you don't want to kill yourself. Yeah, I definitely don't want to do that. Watch out. Next next video, I'm going to be parkouring the Cornwall Mall, jumping off the, <laughs> the ledge there. Um, but all my all my videos that I do now, I always have the idea of, well, am I doing this for likes or am I doing this for myself? You know, it, am I doing it for the views right now or am I doing it for myself? In the back of my head, even at 26 years old, I always have it. I'm like, there's, there's that conflicting thing of, is it just for likes? I don't know. But like the, the likes feel good. It's good. But it, it, sometimes it, it's, I, I can imagine what it's like for a younger kid jumping in there and, you know, maybe one video goes viral, you know, a uh, hundred thousand likes, 10,000 likes. And they're like, Ooh, give me that serotonin right to the brain, dish it out. And then the next video they do 10 likes. And trying to cope with that is always the hardest. I've had a couple of videos that I thought were going to blow up, flop completely. And I'm like, oh no, this is bad. And I just, I want to do that kind of content, but then I'm conflicted with like, it's not going to do very good analytically. And it's so conflicting. It's, it's something I battle with for sure. <laughs> we look at the analytics and everything like that, but for you personally, what's the most favorite memory so far from doing this kind of stuff 
my favorite memory, the biggest accomplishment I think I've ever had from doing a video so far is, is when I started doing a series called Can I Break This Wine Glass with My Voice? So when you have a wine glass that's made of pure crystal, you can kind of find the resonant frequency and you can ah, hold a nice falsetto note. And if you hit it just right, it'll shatter the glass. But it's incredibly hard to do. And I'm not a talented singer. So I was like, I'm going to do this. And it took three episodes. And a lot of it wasn't recorded. I want to think I spent nine, ten hours and ruined my voice multiple times. But in the end, I shattered the hell out of that wine glass. And I'm not going to lie. I, I cried a bit out of pure joy because it was such a... It, it, it clicked with me of like, this is what I need to do. I need to continually challenge myself and not give up kind of a moment to where it really drove my next couple of videos. And it still hits me to this day of like, I can't believe I broke a wine glass with my voice. <laughs> You're a local Regina guy, but I know that TikTok's community is not geographically focused on Regina. Are you seeing recognition within the Regina community? Absolutely. Uh, one time <laughs> I was donating, donating a couple clothes to one of the little bins uh, prior to COVID and a group of kids came up and they were like, are you, are you Ryan Doka? Do you do like those, those like backflip videos? And I'm like, yo, this is, this is weird. I, I am. And then we took a nice little photo. It was a really good moment. A couple other times, um, one one thing I love doing is pushing the boundaries and testing my limits. I did a video where I ran, uh, I believe it was five kilometers, right when COVID started, five kilometers in three masks, and it was a, it was the record hottest day in Regina. That was the first video I saw of you. Oh hey, that's a good video. I I, I thought it was a really good time, and I I didn't do it for any media attention. Everything I do is just based solely for myself. Uh, and the likes. Let's go. <laughs> and so I did that video, not thinking anything of it, but obviously to showcase that, you know, masks, 100% important, wear them. And then, of course, that's where, you know, the CJME picked it up and CBC. And I was like, hey, okay. I'm glad that, you know, I'm getting the recognition for that. But it was more, it was more for the the idea behind it and not myself. So I felt really good doing that. But there's been a little bit of recognition in Regina, which is kind of cool. And also, a lot of my fans uh, on the videos that I have will always be like, whoa, you're from Regina? We got to meet up. And I'm like, ah, 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 there's restrictions, buddy. Maybe in the future, but you just get, come on, meet and greets later on. Wait it out. Let's have a video call. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I get a Zoom with like 80 people. <laughs> be chaos. I know a couple of people have done that. Where they they're meeting their fans on zoom yeah i would do that but it just feels like that would be so many voices i would go nuts <laughs> do it. in terms of beer this is a beer podcast what are you digging right now honestly i was given and uh supposed to drink this amber ale no <laughs> honestly this rebellion amber ale Let's go. It's so it's shameless. <laughs> toasty, caramel, delicious. And the artwork is by Brennan Garrick. <laughs> Real talk, though, I had your uh, cherry mead way, yeah. way back. Oh, my goodness. That is some tasty goods, too. The oatmeal stout as well that you guys had blew me away. So when that comes back, oh, I'm in. Oatmeal Stout is one of my favorite all-time Rebellion beers. Unfortunately, it just, it wasn't as big as hit as we needed to keep it sustained for a full-time beer. So it's just going to yeah. be a seasonal. And the, the Cherry Mead is like one of those heartbreakers because it takes so much time and so much effort and it costs so much to produce. But so many of our other beers and products were taking off that we said we cannot tie up our tanks for this long a period of time to just keep making cherry mead because it wasn't it wasn't working out financially yeah so 
when we expand, we hope to bring it back because weekly, if not daily, I'm getting requests from fans to bring back cherry mead because it's, it's really good. It's banging, but we just can't keep up. I'll start the hashtag now. Bring back cherry mead. Let's get that trending on Twitter right away. Our office manager, Elise, uh, uh, she'll love you for it because it's her very favorite. She wept a little bit when she found out it was going to go away. And I know she hoarded a stash at her house just to like <laughs> have it for a while. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Speaking of Amber Ale, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pop this puppy open. Is it yeah. time? It's time. That's crispy. I like it. That's good beer. I'm not going to... Oh, man. Is that a blind taste for you, or is that the first time? This is my first Amber Ale from Rebellion. I love it. So like I was saying, it's not that traditional English red style. It's more of a West Coast amber. But to taste, personally, that's the way I've grown to love Amber Ale. Yeah, this is this is hitting every single note that I love. I mean, I, I'm going to go to work after this. I'm going to be completely buzzed. <laughs> we'll, we'll just keep that down low <laughs> yeah we won't tell them i'll be in i'll be in my zoom meeting with all of them and i'll just be like hoarding a little little sip every now and then you could just have a coffee cup and pretend it's coffee exactly <laughs> here i am giving out bad work advice <laughs> <laughs> hey it works out anyway i don't know if uh like you never brought this up, but sometimes people say to me, they're like, oh, you must get to drink all the beer you want all day long. And it's like, well, no, I, I've got to stay clear headed and straight so I can get my work done. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, like, you, you got to have like, because you knew your, you know your stuff about your products. Like, holy man, did you blow me away when you're talking about every single beer? I was like, you're a salesman extraordinaire. What the heck? Let's go. <laughs> you must have like complete joy when it comes down to these delicious beers uh, i'll be honest with you i i do it because i love it you know if if i was just here to be a sales guy and just make a buck then it would be a completely different environment and atmosphere um i really hope that when people listen to this pod or when they meet me in person they can really feel the passion and excitement like we take it really personally when people are talking about our beer, whether it's, it's positive or negative, we're like, man, that that's my baby. That's my child. I'm sending that beer off to college one day. I want it to be the best possible, you know, <laughs> post COVID. I hope to see you at the tap room so we can just have a pint. Maybe we'll give you a brewery tour and show you around so you can just kind of see the magic behind the scenes. Yes. I would love to see that. And if possible, maybe we'll get you out and we'll do a really bad dance tiktok i can uh dance in front of you and then you can jump out from behind and then show them how it's done oh i'd love that i actually tried break dancing and i ripped my scalp open uh just recently like three weeks ago trying to do a head spin so that's off the docket but anything else i'm game i kind of do the grade seven shuffle side to side oh, yeah if you learn how to do the floss like that Fortnite floss you got like you're good for years. <laughs> Do you think that dance is going to be evergreen? I don't think it'll go away until Fortnite goes away. And that, I just, they're innovating, man. They're getting so many weird things in there for like, <laughs> I think they got Marvel in there, man. I don't know. I don't want to, Fortnite's a wild one. That's a wild card. <laughs> well, Ryan, I want to thank you for your time today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on. Cheers. Cheers. Rebels, thanks for listening today. If you have any questions or comments about this episode, be sure to join us on our brand new Facebook group page, The Rebellion Brewing Podcast. I'm going to include links to all of Ryan's content so you can find him on YouTube, TikTok, all over social media. I'm also proud to let you know that we're members of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network. It's a one-stop shop for tons of locally produced shows right across our province. You can find them at saskpodcastnetwork.com. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Untapped, and now TikTok, so you don't miss out on the latest in Saskatchewan craft beer. Thank you for joining the Rebellion.